Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are ready to begin. So, welcome to our, I'm not sure what, what year annual this Cool Chemistry is, but we've been doing this a long time and we're glad you could join us, particularly on a rainy evening. My name is Dr. James Cabral. I'm the chemistry professor on campus. Uh, one of the chemistry professors on campus, though you will not see her until later. Dr. Carrie Rukamp is the other chemistry professor on campus. She will be helping upstairs for the slime making after the show. So, I will make that announcement now. When we are done with the show, everyone who wishes to may go outside, go this direction outside, um, to outside, Back up to the science building and upstairs, follow the balloons and the signs, and everyone who wishes to will get to make slime. Now, we're going to do a little bit of that at the beginning of the show in a slightly different way so you get a preview of that. Now, remember, safety first. I said it once, I'll say it again. Make sure that if you're ever doing any kind of science experiment, you have goggles. So, all of my students, when they come up here, they're back there, they're okay, but when they come up and do their demonstrations, they will be wearing goggles. I will be wearing goggles the entire time because I will be helping out. So make sure that if your name, if your ticket is called, you come up to this side of the stage. My helpers will help you get gloves on and goggles on, and then you can assist my students with their demonstrations. Now, science is all about fun. At least I think it is. So. We're going to start this off with a bang. So, I'm going to introduce my organic students, Emilito, Ross, that guy, sorry, <laughs> Elliot, Jenna, and Picha are going to set off some of these balloons. Now, this is going to get loud, so if you are sensitive to sound, fingers in your ears. You ready, guys? All right. Can I have the lights down, please? So, what, what color do you think that was? What color? Okay, I mostly orange, a little yellow, a little black. I don't think it was black. Okay, so each one of these balloons, sets of balloons, should be different colors. So, let's see what the next one is. I don't think there is anything we can do about that now. So these are, these are filled with hydrogen that should eventually dissipate and will fall down harmless. I hope. Okay. So I think we've learned our lesson. Let's not do that again. I, I would try to put the, put the flame try in between. All right. Okay, yeah. They don't want to go. Go. Okay. I think I think that one was a little red. Was this supposed to be red? Okay. Right. Okay. Now, we've got two larger groups. Let's, let's all hope this works perfectly. Which, go ahead. Oh, you're, okay, okay. Okay, really put your fingers in your ears for this one. One, two, three, go. So, so the colors that you see for those individual balloons, we're actually going to do another experiment later on where we'll talk about those, those colors in a little bit more detail. But the colors that you see with flame like that, what you should be thinking is fireworks. Everyone loves fireworks, right? Okay, so 
A couple of other students later on will be talking about flame tests, which will deal with those colors again. Now, so now that we started with a bang, let's cool things down a little bit. And I mean that literally, and I don't say literally very often. So next will be Lacey, Kristen, Tim, and Desiree, and they'll be working with a dry ice bubble. So if you guys come up. So we are going to need two helpers. One little bit? OK, all right. So check your tickets. If I could have the house lights up a little higher just so we can see. OK. So these all start with 703. 703 688. 703 688. And 703 691. 703 691. 688 and 691. If your ticket is called, please go down to the front. On my left, your right. You'll get gloves and goggles there. So, we, we, we have spent the, most of the winter looking at snow and ice. And that snow and ice is made with water. Dry ice is different. Dry ice is made of carbon dioxide. Now, the ice made from carbon dioxide does not melt. It does what we call sublime. It goes directly from a solid to a gas. So any of you have ever played with dry ice before know that you don't ever get a liquid from it. Now, we can use this to our advantage and have a little fun with it. So. Dry ice looks like regular ice, but you have to be very, very careful with it because the temperature of ice on the scale that we use, the Celsius scale, is zero. The temperature of dry ice is minus 78. It is very, very cold, and you do not want to touch it with your bare hands. So that's why we have gloves, special gloves, to be wearing when we're using the dry ice. So what we're going to do is use the carbon dioxide gas that will sublime and make special bubbles. So our helpers are getting the dry ice ready and getting a soap solution onto this handkerchief. So when you add water to dry ice, you make that sublimation process go a lot faster. So if you've ever seen smoke, say you were at a theater, and sometimes they have smoke coming off, sometimes that can be made with carbon dioxide. So this is the fun. You, so. You can buy dry ice. <laughs> Your parents can dry, buy dry ice, I should say. And all you need is a container like this, dry ice, a little bit of soap and water, and you can do this bubble experiment. Go ahead. Pop it. Now the reason why the gas itself is colorless, the reason why you see it coming off that it looks like fog is it is making the water in the air freeze instantaneously and it looks like fog. OK. That was too good, too good. Well, we'll make a lot more of that. <laughs> we'll see if we can get it to work one more time. You can try the soap solution one more time? Yeah. Fortunately, dry ice is not very expensive. And I buy mine at Praxair in Manitowoc, but there are other places around that you can find it pretty easily. So let's, let's, let, it, let's let it grow as big as we can before popping it. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay. So you could do this over and over again. So remember that if you ever play with dry ice, you need something at least like these worker gloves that we're using. Thank you. Okay, so thank you very much. So non-paying, you guys are up next. We're going to be making glow-in-the-dark slime. Now, I just have to say one thing, and this is personal for me. My 16-month-old son is in the audience, and this is the first time that he's seeing any kind of science experiments. So we're getting started. We're getting him started pretty early. Oh, and I will put in a plug. There is another cool chemistry next Tuesday. There are two shows. They happen to be at UW Manitowoc, and they happen to be put on by my wife, Dr. Amy Cabral. So what are the, what are the times? 4.30 and 6.30 at the UW Manitowoc Theater if you want to see more really cool demonstrations. Um, yeah. Okay, so we need one helper for this. So check your tickets, and we're going to do 703-842, 703-842, please come on down. So if you are 842, please come down to Pete and Damon on the side and get gloves and goggles. So for this experiment, and this is similar to what if you want to do later upstairs in the science building is make a polymer. Now, much of what we use and have today in our lives are made of polymers. So, if you have had a drink out of a plastic bottle, that's a polymer. Plastics are made of polymers. In fact, we're going to be using this black light, and most of this black light, except for some metal pieces on the inside, are made of plastics too. So, what you can do sometimes is make a very simple plastic that you can have fun with using Elmer's glue. And if you can hear this, I'll put it up to my microphone. That's the carbon dioxide and water still going down here. I heard it from down here. So while the slime that you are going to be making later, later is going to be colored with food coloring, if you have your parents' permission and your parents' help, you can make it glow in the dark if you use highlighter fluid. Now, one of the reasons why you have to have your parents' permission and help with this is they have to open the highlighter to get the fluid out. And that fluid can color everything. So you have to make sure that you have proper plastic sheeting and, and everything else to sort of clean this up after the fact. So the mixture is Elmer's glue and borax. Borax you can find over the counter at your local grocery store or uh, Walmart, Target, whatever favorite store you have. And things that can glow in the dark can be made to glow in the dark using black lights. This is a $9.99 black light I got at Walmart. So the luminescence is, I should say, phosphorescence. And so the highlighting color that you see, green or yellow, or orange or blue that you see on the page can be made to eventually glow. What we're going to do is we're going to mix this and make the polymer. Sometimes you have to go back and forth with the solutions here. And what we'll do is we'll put it on the table. We'll turn down the lights in a moment once it's ready, and then we'll make it glow. So this kind of mixing in the plastic cup, styrofoam cup, you'll be doing upstairs later. How's it going? It's getting there. It's getting there? Yeah. So one of the things that you will find in any science experiment is sometimes you have to do a little bit of trial and error in order to get it to work. And ask any of my students who have been in my labs, they'll tell you sometimes things just don't work properly, right? Yeah. There was an experiment we did recently that they kind of got angry at me a little bit, I think. Is it ready? Okay, so one of the things that you can do when you make a polymer like this, 
is you can put it in a plastic bag and have a little fun with it later. But as with anything made of chemicals, you have to be careful with it. So it's kind of a goopy mixture, and it's not something you want to sort of leave out. OK. OK, so can I have the lights down, please? So if you want to make something glow in an inexpensive way, we can have the lights up. All you need to do is use a little bit of highlighter fluid because it will glow under a black light. Thank you, guys. OK. So let's see. Tim and Desiree this time? Oh, it crystallized? OK, you want me to hold off? OK. So what we're going to do is we're going to skip over them and come back to them. Uh, Kim and Ben and Jareb are going to do a flame tornado. We had to skip over one, so you guys are up now. OK. So uh, I, I think pretty much everyone in school had to do a tornado drill last week. Those are always fun, those really loud noises in the school and you have to run and hide somewhere. It's better than what's going on in the South right now, I should say. Now, the tornado that we're going to make is not dangerous in that way, but it's dangerous because it's made of fire. I need one helper. I'm going to mix this up a little bit. OK, 703-836. 703-836. Please come on now. Come up to the side of the stage. Now, this is one that you can do at home, preferably outside. And what you need is a... Oh my God, it's too black. <laughs> what, we need is, what you need is a... Um, Waste, uh, waste container that is open mesh and metal, a little bit of foil and a turntable. Go ahead. So we'll get this set up, and then we'll turn off the lights and see. Now, this particular experiment is not just chemistry, it's physics also. So chemistry and physics are closely related. Okay, can we have the lights down, please? Spin it. Keep going. So if you build up enough speed, the flame will spin. And the foil that we have, it prevents the liquid that's burning from coming out. It's okay, it's just a little bit of fire. So you can see, if you build up enough speed, you get the airflow around with the mesh, and the flame sort of shoots up and out of the, there we go. So if you have alcohol and the green is from borax, you can make a little flame tornado. I wouldn't suggest doing this inside normally. You could do this outside. OK, let's put that out. It's always up to the professor to do the hard work, like putting out fires. That's all right. That's, wh that's why we have the plastic sheeting. OK, you guys not ready? A little bit. OK. It's supposed to cool. All right. So we'll do one more experiment before we get back to Tim and Desiree. So 
Uh, Vicky and Jay, you guys are up next. So we need one helper for the disappearing milk trick. This is another one you could do at home. One of the things we did this year was to try to get more experiments that you could do at home. Uh, and some that don't involve creating fire. Although I'm sure a lot of you would like to do that. Your parents just would have wanted to avoid that. Okay, 703-687. 703-687. If you come down to the front of the stage at my left. So, for this experiment, all you need is milk and a couple of diapers. And uh, some of us have a lot of those around these days. Any kind of milk will do. So, this particular experiment is also about polymers. So, one of the reasons why diapers work properly most of the time is that they can absorb a lot of liquid. So in this case, we're going to absorb milk and not something else that would be found in diapers. I'm glad my wife laughed at that one. So. Where did the milk go? We did it so fast. Can try it again. So, so what they have is the absorbent material that is actually underneath the mesh of the diaper. And I believe it's poly, polyacrylate. And sodium polyacrylate, and it's extremely absorbent. So all of the liquid that ends up in a diaper ends up getting absorbed. And that's why we can avoid lovely blowouts <laughs> most of the time. And if you put in too much, then the polymer will not absorb all of it. And, <laughs> and you know what happens. Those of you that have had younger brothers and sisters may you know, know exactly what I'm talking about. So, so if you would like to see, all you need to do is take a diaper and open it up and you can see the material inside and you can absorb some things with it. So thank you very much. Okay, you guys ready? Would you give it a shot? Okay, so we're finally gonna go back to Tim and Desiree with hot ice. And we do need a helper for this. OK. 703-838. 703-838. Please come on down. And I think I say this every year. You are the next contestant on Price is Right. Although I am not Drew Carey. So. Before we get started with this demonstration, how many, how many in the audience have had rock candy? I see, I, from what I can see in the audience, which is not much, I see some hands. Okay, so rock candy is sugar. And the way that rock candy is made is a, what is called supersaturated solution. Supersaturated means there is more sugar in that water than what normally should be there. And it slowly crystallizes on a stick or a piece of rope. Now what we're going to do is take a supersaturated solution of another salt, and that is sodium acetate, and get it to crystallize really fast, hopefully. This, this experiment can be tricky. So go ahead. So they're putting a few crystals on the watch glass. That is sodium acetate. That's the crystal we're going to form. <clears throat> oh, it's too hot. Oh, it's forming crystals. 
It's just doing it slow. Oh. Here, we'll, we'll set it off next. That's a, that's a miracle. It's a scientific miracle. OK, so sorry for the d distraction. Yeah, why don't you? Yeah, just hold it. OK, so the problem with this, this experiment is sometimes the crystals don't form properly. Should we try it again a little bit later? OK, we'll try it again a little bit later. So thank you. We'll try it again. So one thing you have to learn about science is that sometimes experiments don't work, as I said already, as well as they should. OK. So we'll try one more time later. OK, next we have B with genie in a bottle. OK, so we need one helper for this. Again, I'll mix this up. 703683. 703683. Please come on down. Come down to the audience right of the stage. Now, sometimes when you get a cut, you may have to put a little bit of hydrogen peroxide solution on it. Now, the hydrogen peroxide solution that you buy is in a brown bottle. The brown bottle is brown because light can break down hydrogen peroxide into oxygen and water. Now, we can make this reaction go faster if we have the right kind of catalyst. So, the genie in the bottle experiment involves hydrogen peroxide and the right kind of catalyst. And so the catalyst here is manganese dioxide, and it allows for making the oxygen gas a lot faster, and that is the smoke you see coming out of the bottle. The genie was scared off by the rain outside. Yeah. That's right. Thank you. This is, that's not the only time that we'll be working with hydrogen peroxide. So, now, are you guys ready? You guys are next. Okay, let's go. So, this one is a new one for me. And if I could have two people help come up and we want to move this table out of the way. Or at least one person. I'm just going to move it back to the side for now. So, this experiment is called Bubble Kid. What's to blow bubbles? Blow some bubbles. Just for ambiance. Jeff, you want to come? Jeff, you raise your hand. So. Okay, so. Everyone loves bubbles. Everyone should love bubbles. Now, we are used to the little bubble containers where we're used to bubbles this size. You'll notice my students in the back using bubble wands, making pretty good ones. Now one of the things that you can do in order to make the bubbles stronger, make them stay longer, is add some agents like caro syrup works. Glycerin also works. So we need a helper who is going to be our bubble kid. 703823. 703823. I don't think we need gloves for this one, just goggles. OK, so we try this? OK, so all you need to do is stand on the stool and face the audience. Don't worry, the liquid won't hurt you if you step in it. It'll just make a mess. All right, here we go. 
Oh, this might take a couple of tries. Oh. Do you need a little bit more water? Maybe. Okay. Try that. So the idea here is the bubble should come up like a curtain. Oh. See, we're getting there. We'll try a couple more times. Oh. <laughs> oh, we almost had it there. Two more times. Thank you. That worked really well. OK, so all you need for this one is a kiddie pool, water, soap, caro syrup or glycerin, and a stool. And you can have a lot of fun with this one. Oh, there you got it. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you very much. All right. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> Next we have Baylor, Zach. Color changing chameleon. Actually, Elliot, why don't we set off that balloon? So while you guys are getting ready, we'll set off that balloon. Get your goggles on. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to set this one off myself. No, I don't want you to hold it. I want you to tape it down. If you're ever going to set anything alight like this, putting a candle at the end of a yardstick is a really good idea. All right, watch your ears. That means the other one's not going to last up there all that long. OK, you guys ready? OK, so for color changing chameleon, we need one helper. 703 <laughs> <laughs> okay, gloves and goggles. All right, so we've done a lot with fire. We've got bubbles taken care of. Let's do a little bit of color changing. Um, We'll try you guys next. One more time. OK, so color changing chameleon. We're going to get a couple of different colors out of this. So the first thing he's adding is sodium hydroxide pellets. Sometimes the sodium hydroxide is a little resistant to coming out of the beaker. What's next? Sugar. Everything's better with sugar, right? 
<laughs> Kids say yes, parents say no. <laughs> okay, a lot of parents would say yes too. As this is all about a minute. Okay, uh, what can we do for a minute? Um, I could try. I could try the element song. No, I couldn't do the element song. So, one of the things that I suggest. If you're interested in doing science experiments, there are a lot of books out there that you can buy, but what is free, at least at this point in time, the internet. So you will be able to find for free, if you do a quick Google search for kids' science experiments, a lot of science experiments that you can do at home that are relatively inexpensive, or use things around the house that you already have purchased. So it's a great way to get started with a couple of simple science experiments. Um, and things that are simple and safe, not like making your own potato gun at home. Though I think there are quite a few people that have done that on their own already. That's all right. It, just go ahead and just go ahead. And, yeah. Okay. So next comes the magic solution. It starts off purple. And there's blue and green. Oh, it's turquoise? OK, I'm sorry. It's turquoise. And it should keep going. Come on, you can do it. <laughs> and yellow. Is that it? Oh, well, it's still going. We're getting more orange. Oh, I like this one. If you have the mixture correct, it should go all the way around. Oh, yeah. OK. And now you can make it go backwards. Now, these are, these are not chemicals that you will find at home, at least the purple stuff. So notice how he's adding the purple solution, and it resists. It doesn't want to turn color. You have to add enough. That's all right. OK. That's the color changing chameleon. Thank you very much, guys. Okay, we are going to try the super saturated solution one more time. I think we'll just have you guys come up and try it. And the methane bubbles, you guys can start getting ready. All right, so again, when pouring out this solution, oh, you can see that it's already starting to crystallize at the top. We should make a tower of crystals. No? No. It's OK. It'll work tomorrow. Give it an hour. Or an hour later. So you'll notice if you, look at, if you look at the beaker, and I'll hold this up, the crystals are already starting to come out. The people in the back might not be able to see this, but it's already starting to make crystals automatically inside. And that's what happens when you make rock candy. You form the crystals right on the stick or the piece of string that you have in. So you can make. Rock candy at home if you want. It just takes a little bit of time. All right. If there's one every year. Thanks for trying. OK. You guys are up. So next we have Andrea, Sarah, and Carly. And they're going to be working with methane bubbles. So, you said, did we decide on two? Okay. Okay. So, now, one of the one of the numbers that I'm going to call, if you wish to do it, can have their hands set on fire, quote unquote, in a safe way. So keep that in mind. 
So if that's if you do not want to do it, you don't have to come up and I'll call a different number. Okay. 703810, 703810 and 703839. 703839. So 810 and 839. Just gonna have to dip the hand in that? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay, so the gas that we're using to make these bubbles is the same as natural gas. So who wants to take this? So we want to make sure we keep the flame away from the inner tubes full of natural gas. So natural gas, like the hydrogen we used in the balloons, is much lighter than air. Okay, so what we're doing first to make sure your hand is safe is to dip hand in water. The water will protect. Because the, because the natural gas burns that fast, it will burn before it gets anywhere close to your hand and the water will protect. Quick. Just grab a little bit of the bubbles. Okay. Lights down. Good job. You don't shake it like that. Okay, one more. Got to get the water first. So we actually have natural gas plumbed into our lab, so it's much easier up there. So we had to come up with this inner tube in order to get, get it down here into the theater. Okay? Ready? Woo. <laughs> All right. I'm going to do it once. No, no, I need, to, I need to light my hand on fire once. I need to get rid of all the hair in my hand. Whoa, okay, okay, okay. Oh, why are you all of a sudden scared? All righty. Not singed. Okay, so they're going to do one more. Oh. Yeah, we'll not use that one anymore. Okay. Where's the other one? <laughs> Apparently the yardstick was on fire. <laughs> we, can't, we can't have that. Where did the torch go? <laughs> so what we're going to do as the second part of this experiment is try to create as large of a tower as we can now. This is not an easy thing to do. So when you're using an inner tube, there's a, there, there is a, there is a check valve on the inlet. So, <laughs> okay, let's, let's just go with that. You want me to set it off? Get it, get it away, get it away. Now, I don't suggest trying to get a line from your natural gas so you can do this at home. I, I, don't, I don't, no matter how handy you are with plumbing and heat, I don't suggest you try that at home. Okay, so next we have Gavin and Oliver with a flame test.
So, this we're going to talk about the flames from the balloons that we've had. And Gavin has decided that he doesn't want me to talk, he wants to speak for himself. Okay, so before you start, let me call the numbers. Okay, two helpers. 703-699-699 and 703-834. So we have 699 and 834. 699 and 834. Please come down to the stage on my left. Go ahead. Hello everyone, I'm Gavin and this is my partner Oliver and we are going to be showing you the flame test. Now before you saw the hydrogen balloons, how they burst into color, and also with the flame tornado that was up here, we're going to show you basically what that is in a nutshell. And while they're getting ready, would you mind getting the other ready? So for these, instead of the natural gas, we're using propane torches. Can we get the lights down, please? So this is copper metal. If you look closely, it turns green. That was the copper. Now we're going to show you the spray. So everyone in the front row, just be careful. Spray it this way. Spray it, spray it towards the table, not towards the people. Now for the actual flames, what's going on? No, 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 seriously, spray it this way. <laughs> Ever come over this way. Yeah. There we go. All right, now you guys can get out of the way. Bring it closer. Yeah, you guys can sort of get out of the way of the audience there. Gavin? As you can see, it's <laughs> a very dull orange. Gavin, why don't you come around this way? We'll just, we can just leave this here. So, point it that direction. And just like the copper, that's turning green. That's a good one. Sometimes spray bottles don't work exactly the way you want them and they get clogged. For this experiment, you want bigger spray bottles so that they can spray more. Before, we only had a tiny little spray bottle and it didn't show much results. So, which metals are making which colors? This one's potassium chloride. Calcium chloride. Calcium is a very yellow-orange color, maybe even a little bit red. Yeah, get it right in there. Sodium. So the colors that you see that make up fireworks in the sky, these are the same salts that we're using for this flame test. We'll do one more. And we're going to show strontium nitrate. This is strontium. Strontium is red. Try one more time. There we go. There we go. All right, thanks guys. Okay, next we have Colin and Steven. They're going to be doing like a podium powder. Thanks. So we need one helper. You want two? Okay, we'll do two. Okay, 703-804-804 and 703-797. 797 and 804. Please come on down. Yeah, if you want to do it that way. 
So this particular experiment has a little biology. Because the lycopodium powder that you see that is being used in our little squeeze bottles is not a chemical like what's being used in other experiments. This is dry moss. So it has the consistency of very, very fine flour. And fine flour would work with this too. OK, so. What we're going to do first is make a little pile on the table and see if we can light it up. I would put it on the, the yeah. Use the lab stuff and not the, OK, that's good. Yeah, go ahead, let them do it. Remember, only use a fire source with a parent or guardian or chemistry professor present. Remember, these are child locked for good reason. So it's not a mistake. You cannot actually light lycopodium powder on fire in its current state. So there's a little trick. But this is a good thing. Well, actually, no, wait, I guess it is. Oh, you managed to do it. <laughs> That's not supposed to happen. OK, so it was just a little bit of fire. Now, let's do it a slightly different way. So remember to point this not at people. Um, go over there and point it towards me. I'm not people. <laughs> sort of aim it in this general direction. So what we're going to do is make a little lycopodium powder flamethrower. Remember, breathe in first. OK, lights down, please. So, so one of the things that you can do with a fine powder like this is disperse it. You increase the surface area, and then you can get it to ignite. So you guys want to try? OK, now. One of the things you have to do before you do this, breathe in before, you're put, before you put your mouth anywhere near that tube, because otherwise you're going to breathe in all the lycopodium powder. It's not dangerous. They actually put it in ice cream. But you don't want to breathe it in and get a really nasty mouth. So breathe in, take a deep breath, and then go ahead and breathe out with your mouth on the, near the tube. Make sure you get it lit first. So breathe in first, take a deep breath. Blow. <laughs> we'll try it again. When you blow out, just go. Give it a give it some force. So wait till wait till wait till the flame's on. We'll try it one more time. We, we, we got to make this work. Sometimes you see the exp this experiment called dragon's breath for obvious reasons. Try to point it up a little bit. Oh. We'll switch. We'll switch. We, 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 this is so many. We've got, we got to, we've got to get this one to work. So you try that one. We'll do it one more time. I got to rebuild this one, I guess. All right. This will work. I have faith. Hey. All right. 
I gotta do this myself. Thanks. Thanks, guys. That's one of my favorites. Okay. Oh, we'll do one. We'll do one more thing with this, and, and these two can do it. So now they can let them go. They had their fun. They had their fire fun. So. One of the things also with lycopodium like power is that it is hydrophobic. So, you can put your hand in and the powder forms around your fingers and prevents your hand from getting wet. Except now your hand is covered in powder. So that's really cool. So, fun with lycopodium like powder. I didn't know that one, that was good. Thanks. All right. All right, so if I can have someone help move the uh, table again, we're going to do elephant's toothpaste. Oh, you want to do it on the table? Yeah, go ahead. Well, OK, we'll just do it on the table. All right, so how many did you say? Three? Two. Two people? OK. Uh, you could go to the men's room. You could just go out of the theater. And Unless you want to just use some of this. All right. So, two helpers. 703-681-681 and 703-698. 698. So, 681 and 698. So, here, I'll take that. This is one of the all-time favorite experiments. This is all, it's one of the all-time messiest experiments, too. So, once again, where we're going to be using hydrogen peroxide. Now, the hydrogen peroxide that you buy over the, you know, in the store is only a 3% solution. This experiment would work with a 3% solution, but it works a lot better when you have a 30% solution. So 10 times stronger. So one of the things that you want to do with elephant's toothpaste is when you get it to run, you step back. So I will give plenty of space for our helpers and my students to get back. So. Just like with the genie in the bottle, we're going to be releasing the oxygen gas all at once. But this time, we have a little soap around. Uh, I would sort of not put this directly under the light. Okay, you want to move the table back? Yeah, let's move the table back a little bit. Because this one, this one can get some distance. I don't want the theater, the, the theater professor to be too mad at me. OK, so what we're going to be doing is adding soap, food coloring, hydrogen peroxide, and then we will need a catalyst. The catalyst that we will be using for this experiment is potassium iodide. Potassium iodide is what cr makes your salt iodized. So that is the source of iodine in your iodized salt. I have a feeling when this goes off, it's going to go outside the uh, kiddie pools anyway. So that's why we have the rubber matting on stage. So so it looks like we're going to be making one green and one red. It's like it's Christmas. Since we've had an extra long winter, why not have it be Christmas in April? Well, looks more orange. That's okay. It's more Easter colors. Oh. 
We'll try it again. So all you need to do is set the beaker inside. That's all right. You can just leave it in there. Fortunately, we have extra. So remember that as soon as you pour in the catalyst solution, take a few steps back. Because the reaction happens very quickly. Okay. Step back. So the oxygen gas that gets liberated from the hydrogen peroxide makes all the bubbles. And you can see the smoke that's coming off, that's just more oxygen gas. And it's actually pretty hot. And it smells like, like dishwasher soap. It smells good. OK. Thank you very much. Now we're going to do two more. But these have the potential for going a lot further. So well, if you do end up going to UW Manitowoc for their cool chem, and you're looking up at the stage, there's some paneling up above the stage. On the right hand side, one of those panels has a little bit of a stain. Now this is about 30 feet, 25, 30 feet above the stage. That's from this experiment. Of course, maybe I'm, I'm hyping this a little bit too much. So if you want to get a little bit more height from this experiment, you force the gas out through a smaller exit. So we had beakers here, and the exit was about like this, and it was a smaller experiment. Now we're going to do two liter bottles. Ooh, that's hot. And soapy. OK. Here we go. I'm going to step back even further. Don't worry, people in the audience, you're safe. Because this goes up. One, two, three. Stopped right below. That was perfect. Here, we can try to wipe up a little bit of it. So, the nice thing about this is it's only soap. But you'll notice that this will keep going for quite a while. And you know what? Just throw them in here. Just throw them in here. OK, so Courtney and Megan, you can start getting ready as we clean this up. So you can run this at home using the over-the-counter hydrogen peroxide. You just won't get that kind of distance. But notice how we say elephant's toothpaste? The toothpaste keeps coming out. And if you were to put your hands over this, this is generating quite a bit of heat. So you have to be careful with this. I think we will just take this and put it aside. Don't worry about the rest. Don't worry about the rest. Ooh. So next we will have Megan and Courtney with the iodine clock. So we need two helpers. Can I have someone help me move this back up front? OK, two helpers. Seven zero three eight three seven. 
703-837 and 703-816. 837 and 816. Please come on down. So, one of the important concepts in chemistry is called kinetics. And kinetics is how fast a reaction works. So one of the ways that you can see how fast a reaction works is a very drastic color change. So the reason why we call it an iodine clock is because you can test how fast that reaction works to make iodine. So, these two helpers are going to be running this reaction and when you mix this reaction all you have to do is shake it very slowly and just shake it so the liquid doesn't come out. So move up in front to the, to the table so that everyone can see. So just start stirring. It'll, it'll take a little bit of time. Da -da 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 -da. Wait, Jeopardy theme. I'm not very good with tone. So, sometimes the change is very sudden and you have to be patient. So, not every reaction works in an instant like setting things on fire. Just ask my students. So if you ever take a chemistry class, sometimes reactions can take several hours or several days. So if you think about what happens to iron as it rusts, it doesn't rust spontaneously. It takes some time. And as you can see, I'm trying to talk my way through waiting for this reaction to occur. How long? Two minutes? Okay. Sometimes this reaction doesn't work very well. Has it been two minutes? Okay. Okay. We want to get the next, do we need that one for, can we get the next one started? Okay. Oh, that's the sodium thiosulfate? Okay. That's them. It should turn a very dark shade of purple black. We hope. I really do hope. Yeah, I would, yes. I hope it doesn't take a couple hours. Just checking the time. Why don't you, why don't you guys get your stuff ready? Well, I'll get it up here anyway. I'm giving it another minute. Yeah, the show's already running long. Oh, there we go. Now, if you add in the special mixture and you mix it up, the color goes away. Now, I think we'll, we'll not wait for the next one. But one of the things that you could do is you can make this reaction go and turn purple and then start all over again. So we could wait another few minutes and it will turn purple again. So why don't we just let it sit up there for now while we let the other one run. So thank you very much. Um, Luminol, folks, if you could get yours set up too now. Yeah. So, how many? Four? Okay. So, this one has become one of my personal favorites, new favorites. Okay, so. 
So these are going to be four numbers, so I'm going to read these, read these off pretty quickly. 841, 841, 831, 841, 831, 801. I swear, I just picked these at random. 841, 831, 801, and 697. So 841, 831, 801, and 697. 801, 697, 831, 841. Jeff, get yours set up on the side too. I'm trying to. Yes. Okay, so this is one that you can do at home if you have either a fog machine or dry ice. You guys are using the fog machine? Okay, we're going to use the fog machine. Okay, so. Okay, so our helpers are going to be using plastic cups. What we have is trash cans with a hole cut out the bottom and a shower curtain over the top. Some of you have made one more person? I did call four numbers. All right, I'll call one more number. Stand right over here. <laughs> Six nine two. Six nine two. Okay. So, okay. So we're gonna try we're gonna show this to the audience first, and then we're gonna try it with our helpers. So the way this particular contraption is set up, we're blowing fog inside and you can blow smoke rings. So what we're going to do is <laughs> What we're going to do, all right, okay, okay. So what we're going to do is blow cups off our helpers' heads, William Tell style. So all you have to do is stand still with a cup on your head. Stand right over here. All right. <laughs> Just stand very still. Just stand very still. Okay. All right. So stand very. <laughs> it's too much. Quick, quick. The patience here is amazing. <laughs> so, whoever is the parents of this child, I need to learn that. All right, here we go. Stand very still. Ready? Thank you. Keep going. You can feel it. So now we're going to knock down these cups. <laughs> and 
Awesome. All right. Thank you so much. The best part is I get to keep these. I paid for them. Okay. We only have a couple more experiments. So Lumino. So do we do we say just one? Okay. One. One helper. 711, 711. Lucky 711. Please come on down. <laughs> no. no. And actually, I would I would get those get that melting right away because in fact, for a second, I would only do one because we're we're running over, so only do one. Oh really? Yeah. Go up front. Go up front. You guys want to use the stool to make it easy? Okay. All right. Oh man, he's giving instructions. I like that. Okay. So this is a chemiluminescent reaction. Let me know when you're ready. I'll have them turn the lights down. Ready? All right, lights down, please. So when the two chemicals mix, they create a chemiluminescent reaction and you get the nice glowing color. So if you've ever seen glow sticks, this is the same kind of reaction. Okay. Great. Jeff. Um, I think there were tongs over there somewhere. Okay, two experiments to go. Get your goggles on. <laughs> All right. Okay. You guys can go ahead and get set up right away. All right, so. Aim at the other direction. Aim at this direction. Okay, so we're going to see what happens when we burn sugar. So sugar gives you energy, right? Sometimes a little too much. And perhaps some people could use a little bit of it right now since it's getting close to 8 o'clock. So what we're going to do is take a gummy bear and react it with a chemical called potassium chlorate. Now we have to melt this potassium chlorate first, and that's what Jeff's doing right now. So it takes a minute or two, so our final experiment is going to get set up over here. So we've looked at what happens when you release oxygen. So a little bit of the evidence right here. Is it out? Sometimes it helps to live a little more heat. So once we get all of this potassium chlorate melted, we'll drop in the gummy bear. By the way, it takes a lot of temperature in order to melt the salt like potassium chlorate. All right. Go for it. Lights down, please. Step back. So 
So this is the amount of energy that you get from one gummy bear. So this is what your body, this is what your body does. It liberates all this energy. Okay. Let's put it on the side. All right. So notice how our iodine clock has now turned purple again. All right. This is why we saved that gummy bear experiment for last. Let's move this out of the, move the table too. Okay, so, yes, everyone should stand. No, not that far back, scaredy cats. Okay, so, this is the final experiment. This is thermites. So what we're going to do is generate molten iron really fast. So Damon and Pete, ready to go. Lights down, please. So they're starting this reaction with potassium permanganate and glycerin. We hope. It's starting. heat being generated, but what you, what you can see if you look here is two very, very hot pieces of cooling, I, we had tongs somewhere. Um, it's molten iron. So what you saw coming down is molten iron at several thousand degrees. So Pete's going to pick one of these up with tongs. Go, I don't know. Oh. That, is, that is entirely iron. That worked perfectly. Oh, I'm keeping those <laughs> tomorrow when they cool. Okay, so thank you, thank you very much for coming to our show. If you want to make slime, head out the theater. Go to my left, your right. Go all the way around to the science building upstairs. See you again sometime. <laughs>